If I didn't know how to use flash during a ceremony, I would have had to deliver images like this. But instead, I was able to deliver images like this. I'm Nick Hilton, and I'm gonna show you a great way to use flash during a ceremony. All right, so a bit of a background on this particular setup. This wedding was supposed to take place outside, but it was very, very rainy and stormy, so we moved the wedding into a barn. And this is how that barn was laid out. We had the couple and the wedding party up near the entrance of the barn, and then we had all of the audience sitting inside the barn, and the only source of light besides some chandeliers was the natural light that was coming from the open barn doors behind the couple and the wedding party. This is extremely problematic because now you have this super bright light source behind your subjects and nothing to light the front side of your subjects. It basically leaves you with either exposing for the outside and attempting to bring back the shadows on your subjects or you can add your own light. Now with this ceremony, I knew that if I wanted to brave the rain, I could shoot from outside, you know, be shooting towards the audience the entire time. But while that's cool, sometimes I didn't want to shoot the entire ceremony from, from outside. I did want some shots from the audience's point of view and shooting from the aisle for a little bit. So I knew I was going to have to use flash. The venue was cool with me using flash. I asked the couple about it. They were cool, so I grabbed two AD200s out of my bag. I put them on stands and then got the trigger onto my camera. And if we look at our barn setup, I placed my two flashes in the back two corners behind the audience. I put them at equal power because I wanted even output from both corners of the room. And then they're about 11 feet high. That's where my stands max out. Now the reason you want your lights high is to one, create a natural angle, and two, I didn't want any shadows from the audience hitting the wedding party. And so like a side tip, if you put your light high, then the shadow is going to be very, very short. Whereas if you put your light low, when it hits your subject, it's going to cast a much longer shadow. You can see this for yourself if you go outside at noon, all the shadows pretty much go straight down. And then at golden hour, when the sun is really, really low, you get those very, very long drawn out shadows. And so with this setup, what I was trying to do was basically kind of make a light sandwich of the couple and the wedding party. You know, the couple's right here and I have the natural light from outside coming this way. And so I put my flashes inside pretty much to imitate and send light in the other direction. And with this setup, making this light sandwich, it gives me the freedom to wander around and shoot from pretty much any angle that I can fit physically. If I'm shooting from inside the barn, down the aisle, for example, then my flash is kind of acting as a fill to bring up the levels and match it with the background. When I'm shooting from outside with this setup, those flashes inside are actually acting as a rim light because now the natural light is my key light. And if I shoot from any kind of side angles, that flash acts as like a fill and almost like a kicker light. And so you can get a lot of unique perspectives and different angles while still basically having light hitting them from both sides pretty evenly. Real quick, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe, helps out the channel. So once I had the lights set up and I had this plan, I knew that I was gonna be able to shoot from different directions. It was time to dial in the settings before the ceremony started. I of course exposed for the ambient as I always would. And I settled on ISO 200, F 2.8 and shutter speed of one 200th because that is my max sync speed without going into high speed sync. Now, because it was stormy, uh, the outside wasn't as bright as it could have been. So I was able to keep my flash power at 1 16th. That way I didn't have any slow recycle time. So that worked out really well. Now take those settings with a grain of salt because 
your scenario or even my next scenario probably won't work with those exact settings because that's just how it works. But as long as you set your ambient and then just raise or lower your flash power accordingly, you will be fine. And really cool, I wasn't actually expecting it to work out that well, but because I was exposing for the natural light that was outside, as I moved around and I went inside and outside during the ceremony, I did not have to change my settings whatsoever. And now let's take a look again at these two shots that we're taking without flash. Look at how noisy and just awful these are and how much detail you really can't see on the subjects. And then look at when we shoot from the back of the aisle with the flash. Look at how much I was able to raise the exposure up and give it a really nice look. And now here are some shots from other angles so you can see the different effects of those flash as well. So that is one basic way of using flash during a ceremony. I hope this video helped you. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and we will see you in the next video.